Good evening and welcome to Christmas Eve here at Northmont Presbyterian Church. It is great to have all of you here with us this evening. So, uh, as we get started, know a couple of things. Uh, first, that if you are viewing this service from home or wherever you are, know that there are also people who are in our parking lot worshiping at the same time as you are. Uh, we are down there doing all of this same service for them, and so know that you are joining um, lots of other Northmont folks uh, who are here in their cars, and uh, we get to sing together from wherever we are. So thank you for joining us. The only other normal announcement that I have is just to, a reminder that on the 30th of December, we will be having our uh, next installment of Processing the Pandemic, uh, where we are thinking and praying about what this experience has been like, um, just for the betterment of all of us. So if you can join us there on Zoom, then we would love to have you. your hearts and join me in the call to worship. In the darkness we have seen a great light that has led us to the Savior of the world. We gather in awe and wonder. The Messiah is born. The world has been made new. We put away and set aside all that has hindered us and instead embrace the grace and glory of our Creator the giver of all good things. Through the power of the incarnation, God promises we will never be alone. The Spirit of God alive in our hearts is present in the living word, revealing the good news to us. Let us embrace all of who God is and embrace the light that now dwells among us. Come, let us worship God. And as we move toward lighting the Christ candle, listen now to these words from Psalm 96, verses 1 through 6. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered among all gods. 
for all the gods of all the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. We have now come to the end of our Advent journey. Here we have claimed there is something more demanded of us. For all that God requires as we await the Incarnation, there is still greater work now that Jesus is here. As we light the Christ candle, we look forward to the promises of God that remain steadfast. The angels shout, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill for all people. Let us embrace these mandates with gladness. Let us seek God's love with humility and love. Let us pray. God of incarnation, grant us the will and strength to live as your people. Summon in us a desire to experience this season with hope, peace, joy, and love, ready for where you might lead. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
please join me in prayer. We gather here to recall the mystery of our redemption. Though sin drew us away from God, God never stopped loving us. The prophets told of the coming of a Messiah who would initiate a reign of justice and peace. This promise was fulfilled in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Let us now reflect with joy on this wondrous mystery. Amen. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thanks be to God.
And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. With righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thanks be to God. Sweet hymns of joy in the 
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call him Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that the holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward people. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Thanks be to God. There are many reasons to read the Bible. And for as many of us that read it, there are as many interpretations of what to say and why it says it 
and what we're supposed to do. We read it for comfort. We read it for answers. We read for knowledge and wisdom. We read it because we need to know that God is there and that there's a plan. Scripture is a light in a night otherwise devoid of stars. Inspired and inscribed that the darkness might not overcome us. The first two texts that we read this evening from the prophet Isaiah, we know were not originally written or heard with someone like Jesus of Nazareth in mind. Israel was exiled from their homes, ripped from the promised land, and forced to live as aliens in foreign cities. The anointed one they had in mind, who would bring them back and make things right, didn't exactly fit Jesus' description. Someone who would have the government upon his shoulders doesn't exactly describe him word for word. In a world where the wolf and the lamb lie together certainly didn't happen during his earthly lifetime. On the contrary, Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. But there is no way that you and I can read those words, written some 600 years before his birth, without seeing Emmanuel written all over them. That's the power of the gospel. It's not a road map for where we think we're supposed to be, but a guide to where we need to be. The Bible is not an easy read, and anyone who tells you otherwise hasn't really read it. It doesn't promise to be easy, but neither is life. And neither is God. In our pursuit of God, we have far too often traded the pursuits of being gods ourselves for what we should be pursuing. Using scripture as proof text to justify oppression and abuses of power. We can read it and make it say whatever we need it to say. Now, why do I mention these things on Christmas Eve. The world that Jesus was born into was a tough place. King Herod ruled with paranoia and an iron fist. The land was occupied by foreign invaders. And no prophet had been known in Israel for generations. Not since the people returned from the exile that Isaiah wrote about. And then it came. A babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. A multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward people. The hopes of a nation were born anew in that stable. And the world would never be the same. And when Luke wrote down an account of all of these things, he captured the essence of why we hold the Bible to be holy. About a year and a half ago, we tragically lost a gifted young author and theologian named Rachel Held Evans. While describing the nature of the Bible, she writes this. If you are looking for verses with which to support slavery, you will find them. If you are looking for verses which will abolish slavery, slavery, you will find them. If you are looking for verses with which to oppress women, you will find them. If you are looking for verses with which to liberate or honor women, you will find them. If you are looking for reasons to wage war, you will find them. If you are looking for reasons to promote peace, you will find them. If you are looking for an outdated, irrelevant, ancient text, you'll find it. But if you are looking for the truth, believe me, you will find it. This is why there are times when the most instructive question to bring to the text is not, what does it say, 
But what is it there for? I suspect that Jesus knew this when he said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. If you want to do violence in, the, in this world, you will always find the weapons. If you want to heal, you will always find the balm. This is a text that heals. When many have used scripture to exclude and divide, this passage reminds us of what the word is meant to do. And I think the reason that we can't wait to return to this story year after year is because for all the reasons we read Scripture and for all the things people can do and use it for, this is as pure as it gets. It's a balm, soothing the sin-sick soul, reminding us of who we truly are. It is healing. For those that God descends to earth to take up residence with. The true light that illumines every person that comes into the world. That light comes to set us free, that we might experience joy in the fullest, and that we might be, be, that we might be made whole again. This is why we tell the story. Because it tells us about God's intention for humanity, God's gift to the world. And as our Advent time concludes, let Christmas begin within us. May we express the power and the essence of the gospel today and every day. By word and deed, may we be the balm that heals others, that everyone might know how extraordinarily loved they are. May it be so, and to God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen. We now enter into our time of offering. We encourage you to continue to give those offerings via the mail or electronically. Let us pray for those offerings now. Holy and gracious God, on this evening we give you thanks. We look around us, whether we are at home or in a parking lot, seeking your grace, seeking to understand what it means to be your children. We thank you that scripture inspires us this evening to be those who reach out into the world and allow others to see your glory through the ways that we live and love. May all that we give, may all that we have been given, inspire us to continue to be your church. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. And now, if you are with us, and you are either at home or you're in your cars. Uh, what we'll be asking you to do is, if you're here with us, to uh, have your candles ready. And if you're at home and you don't have a candle handy, uh, then pause me, if you haven't already, and <laughs> go and get a candle, because we'll be finishing our service as we do traditionally here at Northmont.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all people through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lights every person that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of people, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
<clears throat> My friends, as I imagine you, wherever you are, with your candles lit, your faces aglow with anticipation of Christmas morning. I am ever grateful. I am ever grateful for what it means to be with you, to celebrate the incarnation, to celebrate a Savior born. We continue to do this together out of love, even at a distance. And I thank you for all the ways that you continue to love each other. Because we know in this world, we can decide, we get to choose. We get to choose how we are going to enter into this world whether we are going to offer words and actions that divide, things that break down, things that tear apart, cynicism, doubt, rage, or we can offer something else. We can look towards scriptures like this one. They remind us of the beauty that can be built and sustained when we come together. What God creates in us is something marvelous. And that's what we celebrate this evening. Go from this place sure of the unbelievable love that God has for you because God came here to abide with you. We are ever thankful for that presence in our lives, a gift of light for the world. And in it, we are reminded that we are never alone. For we go from this place sure of the presence of the one who creates us and redeems us and sustains us, now and always. Amen. And Merry Christmas.